Good morning, everyone who might just be joining us uh, for today's Small Business Summit. This is Tommy Johnson from the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce. Um, we're just getting ready to start our next session at 1030, and we've got a couple of minutes. We're going to let some folks join on. Um, but just want to reiterate, if you were on the last um, presentation, each of the presentations that we're doing today will be recorded uh, and made available to you after the event. Uh, all the slide information that was presented by our presenters today will also be available, uh, as well as a post-event survey. So I do encourage you to check for that email when it comes out and uh, take advantage to either rewatch the videos or look through those slide decks a little more, or please give us some feedback when you do get the, uh, get the survey. Uh, but in just about a minute, I will introduce uh, Rhoda from KMA for the next session. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to HR Talent Planning as your workforce reopens. I um, hope, uh, Tommy, is everyone hearing me all right, do you think? Can hear you fine, Rhoda. Sounds great. Excellent. And are you going to advance the slides or am I? I was going to have you do it. You've got, you can share your screen. Um, maybe I should explain to you uh, down the bottom right. If you, yep. uh, you see where the, the screen share is. I see it says Tom, Thomas Johnson presenting. Yep. So if you go ahead and share, you'll over, you'll overwrite my, my sharing. So you're, um, you're set to come up right up. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's see. All right, let's go. Okay, is my screen? Do you see my screen now? It is perfectly maximized and optimized, Rhoda. Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. So, again, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Talent Planning as Your Workplace Reopens. Um, I am Rhoda McVeigh. I'm the Regional Director for KMA Human Resources Consulting, uh, which is based in Falmouth, Maine. And we do have clients throughout Maine, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts as well. And KMA is, is your partners in managing and growing your most valuable resource, your people. So uh, let's start with what's at stake with what's going on. Um, clearly a lot. The pandemic has created a monumental dilemma no leaders have faced before. Reopening means asking your team to run the risk they may be exposed to the virus. Staying closed any longer means you may never have the means to open again. So let's talk about what you may already be considering, should be considering with regard to your employees about reopening, bringing them back to work. First of all, communication. Communication, my uh, perspective is, is at the foundation of all successes and it's at the foundation of all failures. So you definitely want to have been communicating clearly and frequently with people who were furloughed or people who were working from home and just not sure what was going on. And you've been asking them all throughout, how are you doing? Hope things are going well, what help do you need from me? And you've been telling them what you do know or you don't know. We highly recommend having an infectious diseases and control plan to document all the steps and protocols in one document, along with any self-certification requirements you might be requiring at your business. You also might want to consider publishing a brief guide or FAQs for your employees that helps cover all those things that you know they're going to be concerned about. Um, and I'll be discussing a little bit more in this presentation, like fear of returning to the workplace, sanitation, distancing, meetings, you want to tell them what the requirements of them will be. Self-certify, temp checks on the way in every day, do they have to wear face mask, uh, wear face coverings, work staggered shifts, be socially distant in the workplace, one person in the bathroom at a time, their role in sanitizing. Um, a good uh, mantra to have is you touch it, you wipe it. That's an easy one to remember for sure. You definitely want to be sure to explain these things it may also change throughout the next several months as people start to go back into the workplace. Customers or clients start to come in because we're all experiencing these things for the first time and there may be some things that come up that you hadn't previously thought of. You also want to be sure you include your employees, ask them to share any ideas they may have on improving your protocols. Let them know you're open to continuing to make it better, that this is something that's going to be a work in progress for us for a while. Remember to send your team email or text frequently to remind them that you're taking every step possible to make your workplace a safe environment and reminding them of what's required in the workplace. 
You also want to remember to regularly check in with websites like CDC, DOL, OSHA, your state agencies for any updates because this stuff is changing quickly, daily, sometimes multiple times during the day. And KMI Human Resources also has a resource page that you can access where we keep it updated on a daily basis and it's at kmahr.com. Now let's talk a little bit about workplace prep. You want to first of all do a mental walkthrough of your employee's day. Sorry about that. You want to do a mental walkthrough of your employee's day from parking lot to being at their workstations and beyond. That means like the entrance, the stairwells, the elevators, time clocks, workstations, break rooms, shared printers, customer client interaction areas. Work with managers to adapt specifics to their particular areas. Uh, and I want to tell you, the OSHA website does have an excellent guidance about how to do a hazard management, a hazard assessment in your workplace. So it's very easy to access that and it helps walk you through the things you should consider. You also want to consider employee traffic flow within your office space. Can you have employees work, walk one way down a hallway or one way into a shared area, one way out to be sure that you're lessening the chances of them coming within six feet of each, with each other? Also, you're going to have to thoroughly clean your offices. That means your air ducts, your ventilation systems, your work surfaces, your floors. Every surface a hand can and has touched, you want to be sure has been thoroughly cleansed as, and is on a schedule to be constantly re-cleansed. You also want to try to make your work environment as touchless as possible. Auto door openers, auto faucets, auto soap and paper dispensers. Uh, if you have a keypad where people key in to enter the workplace, you want to try and replace that with something that, where they just have to wave their ID a, in front of it. And clearly, these retrofitting activities of your workplaces are going to cost some expense, some money to you. But it's something that is not going to go away anytime soon, and you can ease into it and pace yourself as you get your workplace fit, retrofitted in such a way to be as safe as possible to your employees. You also want to be sure you post signs in common areas like your elevators, your conference rooms, break rooms, bathrooms, stating that these areas have been thoroughly sanitized and the schedule on which they're going to be cleaned. Is it every three hours? Is it twice a day? What is it? Be sure and then be sure that the cleaning does actually take place. You also want to post other signs available through your state agencies through OSHA or CDC around hand washing, stop the spread of germs, how to wear a face covering properly, and what to do if you feel ill at work. Um, you also, it's important, you're required by law to post the FFCRA poster, that's the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. There's a poster regarding employee rights to paid sick leave and or family medical leave related to COVID-19 related reasons. You definitely wanna be sure you have that posted as well. And you wanna consider floor markers tape lines for six foot distances. You wanna be sure you place masks, face masks, sanitizers, paper towels, et cetera, throughout the premises to make them accessible to your employees. If you allow clients, customers, vendors, et cetera, in your workplace, you wanna post signage for them. Are face coverings required for them? Should they really stay in their vehicles and call the person they're visiting before they attempt to enter the building? And make sure your employees are made well aware of the protocol and are compliant with these requirements also. They can help you a great deal in that regard. Um, of course, you know, no employer can ever guarantee 100% safety in the workplace and that no one will contract COVID-19. However, you, want to, you definitely want to do your best to stay up on the requirements to, to um, make the, your location as safe as possible. And it's really important that you show you're taking every proactive step that you possibly can to make your workplace as possible for everyone there, because that will show great pro proactivity towards doing it and that you take it very seriously because you do. Social distancing, we've all heard a lot about this. So what does it mean in your workplace? You wanna prohibit lingering or hovering over workspaces, no standing around the water cooler, talking about last night's uh, show that they saw on television or whatever. You wanna ask employees to gently remind each other if they're not following the protocol. Remember, this is new to all of us and it's gonna take some behavior modifying of all of us to remember to do these things, and remember to stand a distance from each other. You wanna think about relocating your workstations to six feet, at least six feet apart. 
And if they can't, if you can't do that, then you need to think about installing some sorts of dividers, whether it be um, some sort of plexiglass or some other type of divider that's going to uh, be sure there's more safety of the, the uh, emissions moving between the locations there. You also want to establish distancing guidelines and headcount maximums in any common spaces like a conference room, a break room, bathrooms it may only be able to be one person at a time in your bathroom, even if there are multiple stalls, that kind of thing. As much as possible, try to restrict meetings to video only. Or if you do have a conference room, make sure that it's the maximum only so that people can be in that room at least six feet apart and can enter and exit without going next to each other. In fact, many businesses are no longer having coffee stations or shared microwaves. Uh, you need to really determine what is best and safest for your own environment. Let's talk about workplace exposure. First of all, make sure your employees know that if they feel sick, they do not come to work. If they feel sick, tell them not to come in in the morning and tell you, I'm feeling sick, and then leave. If they're not feeling well, they should not come to work. Have a plan in place for this occurrence. That's part of that um, infectious disease plan I spoke about earlier. And ensure that every employee has a copy of it and know what to do. Potential exposure situations should be reported to your HR or your workplace um, leader right away to let them know that you think somebody may be there or you yourself may have that exposure. This can also include if an employee is living with or exposed to a healthcare worker caring for COVID-19 patients, returning from travel or exposed to someone, direct contact with someone who's returned from travel, that kind of thing. Employees who exhibit symptoms of fever, cough, shortness of breath, you want to make sure they leave work immediately and seek medical care. So call, contact their doctor right away. And employees, can, employers cannot assume that um, a person, an employee who contracts COVID-19 did not contract it at work, that, oh, they must have gotten it at the grocery store or something. Because OSHA is requiring employers to conduct a workplace investigation for any employee that may have been at work with um, either the beginning of COVID-19, active COVID-19, or exposure to some and such. There are also criteria for which you have to record COVID-19 exposure in the workplace on your OSHA 300 log. Um, and that's if there is a validated, verified COVID-19 diagnosis, illness um, resulting in days away from work, which of course, if anyone is diagnosed, they'll have to be home at least 14 days and get uh, retested before you can allow them to return medical treatment beyond first aid, those kinds of things. So make sure you have a plan. And uh, we have some samples for that on, the, on our website also. And this is the time to help your employees. <clears throat> Somebody spoke earlier, um, uh, Denise, I believe it was, spoke earlier about being kind and helpful. Everyone is coming off a traumatic experience. Um, again, the entire world is dealing with this right now. And none of us who are alive right now have dealt with something like this. So be sure you let employees know who can they talk to about their fears and concern. Are there, is there an HR person? Is it their manager? Is it a leader in the workplace? But if it's not an HR person, goodness knows, HR people, we've been living this day in, day out these last several months, so we know how to handle these discussions. But some of your managers may not have, particularly if they've been remote and now they're going to be back in the workplace. Be sure you provide them some training on how to respond to an employee of theirs who might approach them with a concern or some fear of some sort. Even if it's to reach out to you, the HR person for help, that's okay, but be sure they know what to do. If you have an employee assistance program, that's an EAP, you can always refer your employees to that. There are all kinds of resources available through EAPs nowadays, especially related to COVID-19, job loss, uh, loss of a loved one, fear of returning to work, that kind of thing. Flexibility is really key now. Flexibility around return dates, flexibility around work schedules. In fact, some employees may ask for accommodations about where they're working, wearing face masks. They might have some religious uh, reason why they don't want to or some medical reason. You want to accommodate when you can, remembering to engage in the interactive process with them, as some of this may well be covered under ADA, the Americans with Disability Act, which does require you to interactively engage and figure out how to accommodate that. I think you also want to remember that all of the states are still urging employers to allow their employees to continue to work from home as much as they possibly can. 
if it's been working well and if they can continue to do that, it's a good idea to have them continue doing that for a while. There are also some things that you want to consider about recalling employees to the workplace. If you're recalling furloughed employees, those are employees that you have just stopped working, they were not able to work remotely, but you have not terminated them, you put them on furlough, you wanna give them a written notice that gives them the date of the notice for them to return to work, confirms their title, their exemption status, their pay, uh, their hours, their schedule. Even though, even if nothing has changed, you definitely wanna give that to them in writing again, because you wanna be sure you're both clear on what the expectations are from day one. If you're returning a laid off employee or employees, remember those are employees that you terminated. That is a rehire. You need to give them an offer letter or whatever you normally do when you hire people as well as utilize your normal rehire paperwork for that. You also wanna be sure you don't discriminate. And what I mean by that is that you don't decide for people who should come back to the workplace or not just because they're in a high vulnerability group. Just because you have an employee who may be pregnant and you're worried about her coming into the workplace, that's not your decision, that's her decision. You have employees who are 65 or older, you know, they're vulnerable. You don't want them to come back. Don't make that decision for them. Let them make that decision. You do not want to discriminate. And you need to really uh, realize that some people will be too afraid to return to work. You, know, you have one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one conversations with those people, really probe for understanding. What are they concerned about? What can you tell them you're doing to try and mitigate those fears or neutralize them? And this may evolve into a conversation asking for accommodations. Also, you need to plan for recruiting and onboarding in a remote workforce world going forward if you haven't already done that. What that means is you wanna make use of applicant tracking and onboarding tools. Generally, those are part of your payroll or HR platform or can easily be added to that. You wanna use remote video, Zoom, FaceTime for doing interviews with people. And you need to accept you may not actually meet a person face to face before you make a hiring offer. That doesn't mean you still don't go through all the other pre-employment processes you normally have, but you may not meet face to face. And uh, you can legally screen candidates for COVID-19 only after making them a conditional offer of employment. That's when you say, I'm making you an offer of employment to join my company as a programmer effective blah, blah date, and here are other pre-employment processes you must complete, including a COVID-19 test. But if you do that, if you do require pre-employment COVID-19 testing, you must do it for all people that you hire with that same job title. So you can't do it for a programmer this week, but two weeks later you hire a programmer and you don't, you don't test them. You need to make sure that everyone in the same job category gets tested. And you may not test for um, the, um, not the, the asymptomatic and for the antibodies. You may not test for that. There's been a ruling on that. You may only require tests for COVID-19. And you may delay the start date of someone that has COVID-19 or symptoms. You can legally withdraw an offer if you need someone to start right away, but this person is telling you, they're revealing to you and they, they must disclose to you that they have COVID-19. But you want to be careful about that. And what I mean by that is you're saying, okay, I'm withdrawing this offer, uh, this conditional offer I made you because you have COVID-19 because I've got to fill this job right away. You've got to remember, you better fill that job within the next couple of weeks because otherwise that person's going to be available to hire back. That's why you may want to hold a job for someone at that point. So be careful with that. Um, you want to provide electronic and customized portals for new hires to complete as many first week tasks online as possible, such as new hire paperwork, new hire orientation, process training, anything people could do through a website, you wanna try and offer that as much as possible. Um, because again, the wonderful world of Zoom um, and Google here has, is allowing us to uh, reach people wherever they are to do these processes and have conversations with them and walk them through some sort of orientation program. So I just want to recap some of the things that I've said today. Uh, give your employees clear, transparent communication about what you know, what you don't know, and what you're doing as a business to lower risks for the team. Workplace cleaning and sanitization on a regularly scheduled basis is a must. Involve your employees as much as possible by holding them accountable for keeping their work areas sanitized. Remember, tell them if you touch it, you wipe it. Inspect what you expect. If you expect face mask wear, make sure people are wearing them. If you expect social distancing, inspect to be sure people are social distancing and cleaning, that everyone has 
uh, some skin in the game on the cleaning side, but make those supplies available to people. Encourage your employees to talk with HR or with you uh, or with the designated leadership about what they're feeling and really listen. Be empathetic and helpful. This is the time to be flexible. This is not the time to be black and white, draw a line in the sand. Nope, you do this or else. Be flexible. It's, this is new for everyone. You want to make sure that you're uh, in creating that loyalty in your employees because you are being flexible. You are willing to listen and try and figure out how to make things work for you and work for your work. Return employees to work lawfully. Don't discriminate. Don't make the decision for them. And get comfortable recruiting, hiring, and onboarding remotely because that's, that's the wave of the future and that's the way it will be from now on. So now I'd like to open it up for questions. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can get back and see if any questions have come in. Um, and we are HR. That's me, Rhoda at KMAHR.com. Let me see if I can get back to the screen now. Yes, okay. All right, let's see if we have any questions that have come in. Let's see. Okay, uh, in the chamber we'll be sending a follow-up question. Rhoda, many, many small businesses do not have an HR person department. How can owners, operators execute these best practices without a dedicated HR person? That's a very good question. Um, you know, whoever is designated to do human resources type work from an administrative perspective or from interacting with people in your workplace is really who should receive some training, do some research, use uh, the KMA website and the OSHA and CDC websites to really get themselves comfortable with what the requirements are and what they need to do. You can always reach out to consultants like KMA or, or, or another to, to get that information to, to really help walk you through this. That's a lot of what we're doing at KMA right now. We're helping our clients really figure out the best way for them to bring people back or not, and how to do so in a way that makes everyone feel comfortable and they're most productive as well. That's a good question. What other questions are out there? Anybody? Oh, let's see. Is there any guidance on how to manage employees who cannot or will not wear face coverings? Yes. But first of all, have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. Um, Ask them why they're not wearing face coverings. Why don't they want to wear face coverings? Make sure you understand if there's a medical reason, you can require documentation from the doctor about what the medical reason is. If there's a religious accommodation, you just need to have them help you understand what that requirement is. And then you need to work with them in terms of they absolutely must ensure social distancing if it's that kind of situation. But if it's neither of those things, then it becomes a performance issue. Somebody who just doesn't want to because I don't like them, I don't believe them, then... I want to make a political statement or whatever it might be. Um, just let them know that if they don't comply with your workplace rules, that you may well have to take next steps with them because this is a workplace rule that you're holding everyone accountable to. Then there's a question, is there an agency to contact if employees don't feel as though their HR department has been trained yet? Um, you can always, yes, you can always call, um, you know, your state agency, um, the CDC, that kind of thing to, to find out. Uh, where you can access information. The websites are actually really, really good right now in terms of talking about what employee rights are, talking about what employer rights are, giving samples and templates and things like that. And again, we do have so much of that on our resource page. And I believe Amy said earlier, the Better Business Bureau has a COVID-19 resource page as well. So there's just a wealth of information out there. Uh, but again, you want to be sure that the information you're accessing, you feel has credibility at the same time. Uh, because there are a lot of good actors out there that sometimes put up information that is not accurate. So you definitely want to act, access really, um, you know, relative sites that you do depend on. Good question. Anything else? Okay. Well, it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a wild workplace out there these days and everyone is learning. We're all learning new things as we go. And uh, we've got to be flexible and, and, you know, again, be kind to each other and help each other get through this together because our businesses will come back. It's not going to be without some differences, but some changes. But, um, and we just had another question come in. Are the differences state to state? The only differences state to state are really in when things can reopen 
the number of people that can gather in a place, uh, the types of businesses that can open and the conditions under which. Those are the only things that differ. Otherwise, the common sense uh, stable approach is social distancing, wear face masks, um, keep, keep do what you need to to be sanitary, wash hands, use cleanser, that kind of thing. Those things are all the same from state to state. That's a very good question though. But again, state agencies are gonna have all of those differences, like if you're allowed to open or not on their websites. And I'm happy to help anyone as well. If you uh, wanna reach out to me, it's Rhoda at kmahr.com with any other questions that perhaps you think of later on today. And I appreciate you having me here today, Amy and Tommy. I've, I've really enjoyed this. Rhoda, thank you. Great presentation. And again, thank you to you and the entire group at, uh, at KMA. You guys have been longstanding partners of the Chamber of Commerce, and, and we can't thank you enough for the continued work you do with the Chamber. It seems like about once a year, we, we put you guys on the spot for something that's always very topical uh, and pertinent. And certainly with COVID-19, that presentation, I think, uh, gave us a really good overview as to some of the things to expect in the, in the coming months as we begin to be begin to reopen. So uh, with that, Rhoda, I will thank you and I'll let everybody know if you're sticking around for the next presentation, which will be at 1130. Uh, that's going to be uh, with Paula Mahoney from Words at Work, understanding communications, messages that connect during COVID times. Uh, that'll be coming up in just a few minutes and I will come back on uh, to give us a, just a quick heads up and some housekeeping before 1130. Thanks again, Rhoda.